Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 266. On Now You Know. We are brought to you as always by our amazing Patreon patrons. If you want to help support create independent news every week, head over to patreon.com slash now you know, and there you'll find some awesome perks. <sighs> What's up? What's the matter? Uh, you, you know how you sign up for a subscription service and then a few months later they jack up the price and they don't tell you? Yeah. Well, I can't keep track of all the subscription services I belong to. I mean, there's music streaming, movie streaming, apps. Most of them I only use for like a few months. Well, this is why I told you to use privacy.com. How would that have helped? Well, privacy lets you set limits for subscription services or anything really, and lets you create virtual single use cards that close themselves automatically. Wait, so I could have just set up a privacy card that would have stopped paying when I wanted? Exactly. And you would have saved a lot of money for something you didn't even want. Oh, that sounds good. If I use a privacy virtual card every time I sign up for a service, I won't have to worry about runaway spending. Exactly. That's the beauty of privacy. Spend limits give you the final say in how much you get charged. Man, I wish I could go back in time. So how much does privacy cost? There's no monthly fee, in fact. Head over to privacy.com slash now you know and sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase. I guess don't be like me. Go to privacy.com slash now you know and sign up now. And thank you to privacy.com for sponsoring the show. And we're brought to you by BigBattery.com. No matter what you need to power, Big Battery can provide you with the latest battery tech at the best price per kilowatt hour, guaranteed. Their batteries are easily installed, require zero maintenance, and they're made right here in the U.S. Pick up yours today at BigBattery.com and use the code now you know for 5% off at checkout. All right, so company shareholder meetings can often be quite boring uh, with procedural votes on things like accountancy firms and other corporate stuff. But Tesla shareholder meetings are usually quite interesting because we usually get to hear from Elon about what what's happened over the past year, and he often shares ideas about where Tesla is heading. At Tesla's 2021 annual meeting of shareholders held at Giga Texas this year, Tesla shareholders voted to re-elect Kimball Musk and James Murdoch to the Tesla board of directors, along with a few other votes on proposals like shortening director terms to two years. But speaking of finding out where Tesla is heading, at this shareholder meeting, we literally got to hear where Tesla is heading. Yeah, Elon dropped the news that Tesla will be relocating its headquarters to Austin, Texas. I'm excited to announce that we're moving our headquarters to Austin, Texas. <laughs> Just to, to be clear though, we will be continuing to expand our activities in California. So this is not a matter of, of sort of Tesla leaving California. Um, as I said, we're, we're, our, our intention is to actually increase output uh, from Fremont and from uh, Giga Nevada by 50%. And, and it's, it, it, it's, it's tough for people to afford houses and a lot of people have to come in from far away. And so it's, uh, we'll, we'll take, you're know, taking it as far as, as possible, but it's, um, there's a limit to how, uh, how big you can scale in, in the Bay Area. So um, we, uh, here um, in, in Austin, and our, you know, our factory is like five minutes from the airport, 15 minutes from downtown. Um, and uh, we're going to create an ecological paradise here on the car because uh, we're right on the Colorado River. It's going to be great. So um, to emphasize gain, continuing to expand in California significantly, um, but, but, um, but even more so uh, here in Texas. Now, there are so many valuable nuggets from the shareholder meeting. We're going to do this as one big story, but with lots of goodies. So pay attention. So the Model 3 became the best selling premium vehicle globally from zero to number one in less than four years. Yeah, I mean, get this, the best-selling premium vehicle globally is an electric vehicle. I mean, I almost got arrested at one point for claiming that we'd do 5,000 a week, literally. we <laughs> 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 are laughing now. Um, anyway. If you think that's big news, Elon thinks the Model Y will exceed Model 3 sales with a good chance of it becoming the best-selling vehicle by revenue in 2022 and then becoming the best-selling vehicle of any kind globally in 2023. Wow. wow. Now, Elon pointed out that Tesla had strong free cash flow generation of $4.2 billion in the last four quarters. And taking a look at this chart here from 2017 onward, you can see that this is no small feat because they used to have negative cash flow. 
Elon said Tesla would be opening to licensing autonomous driving software to other manufacturers because he thinks that all auto manufacturers will eventually be making autonomous electric vehicles. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, he hasn't even finished full self-driving and he's already talking about licensing it. That Elon always getting ahead of himself. But it is pretty exciting to hear that he's so confident that it's going to be the next big thing and that Tesla is basically going to turn on another revenue stream by licensing it to other manufacturers. And I mean, I think that this is a, you know, a forward looking statement, something that shareholder meetings are for. You know, I don't think that he's going to turn around and tomorrow we're going to see a Ford, you know, with Tesla full self driving in it. it. We're probably two to three years away from that even happening from when they start full self driving in their own cars. Elon said there's an ongoing focus on cost reduction. So if we look at the ASP or the average selling price of Tesla vehicles, it has consistently gone down while the gross margin has been going up, currently at about 24%. And that's kind of interesting because across Tesla's fleet, most of the prices have been going up. So you might not expect the average sales price to be going down, uh, but you do have to keep in mind that, you know, uh, they weren't selling Model S's and X's for a couple quarters. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what's been driving the average sale price down is that uh, there's been more threes and Y's as opposed to S's and X's. So they get kind of a break there. Mm. But Elon said the recent price increases that we have seen are from pressures in the supply chain, but that he wants to reduce the price over time and make Tesla vehicles more affordable. Now, Elon pointed out that Tesla uses a lot of batteries. Tesla accounted for 0.7% of car sales, but bought 26% of all cells used by the auto industry in 2020. And Elon went on to point out that demand for stationary storage, things like power walls and mega packs, will be at least as high as for vehicles. This is exciting news because this means that Tesla Energy could become a major revenue gain. And he pointed out the five-step plan to reduce costs. We saw most of this at Battery Day, but it's just good to know that they're on track for lowering the cost dramatically. And it's interesting that Elon didn't stay on this slide very long, almost like it was like a secret and he didn't really want to dwell on it. And I mean, they did go over all this stuff at Battery Day, so maybe that's why he didn't want to dwell on it too much. He knew that he could probably go on for three hours about it. Right. And now he had this awesome photo of the three new factories. And uh, he said that Giga Shanghai is now outputting more than Fremont. And Fremont has plans to increase output by 50%. He pointed out that Tesla's factory safety is 18% better than the industry average. Nice to hear. And then we got to questions from actual shareholders on Say.com. One question was, when will Cybertruck production begin and what is the rate of the ramp? Elon said that this was limited by supply chain shortages and that Cybertruck will start production by the end of next year and volume production in 2023. He also went on to say that the Semi and the new Roadster are going to be coming out in 2023. So, I mean, 2023 could, like we've said, be a huge year for Tesla. Uh, there's a question about a stock split. How about another stock split? Elon said not yet, maybe in the future. And I think that this is smart. I think that people kind of didn't even realize that the last stock split happened because we're back up to like pre-split levels. Right. I think it's smart to wait for Tesla to get up into the thousands, multi-thousands, maybe before another stock split. I mean, yes, it's not so great for shareholders who want to buy one stock. You can do fractional shares, but I think that it will really drive home for the average person that Tesla is a valuable company. Yeah. There was a question if they are making the 4680 in Austin. Elon says that they aren't right now, but that they are making them at the Cato Road pilot plant. I um, mean, he says that it, this is not a small pilot plant, 10 gigawatt hours a year. Um, he says that Cato will make enough cells to scale the Model Y, uh, but that they will reach full scale production of 4680s next year in Austin. So I'm trying to figure out when the 4680 will start being made in Austin. I mean, he said next year, mm -hmm. but does this mean that like, they're going to learn everything they can at Cato and then take that production facility, which is probably just one battery line right now, and then bring it over to Gig Factory Texas and then scale it up to multiple lines. I think that Tesla has learned uh, get your process down first before you start scaling up lines. Um, that's something that they learned with the Model 3. And that was evident by Giga Shanghai ramping up production so quickly. So if Cato is scaled, let's say, 10x. Uh, that could mean that Giga Texas would have 100 gigawatt hours a year of production, which could feed over a million Model Ys a year. That would be a pretty significant battery factory. Well, and the big question here is, are they going to do this themselves? So will this be vertically integrated Tesla cells or are they going to, you know, have Panasonic or LG come in and build out the lines like they did at 
Nevada. Yeah, I mean, we know that they're developing these lines, so I don't know why they would need to license out to another battery manufacturer if they could become the manufacturer. I mean, this could be huge news if they keep it themselves. Exactly, because it just cuts out the middleman. They're right. going to be buying like raw battery materials and then making batteries, um, which means that also their recycling process is going to be a lot easier, too. Yeah. There was a question about are there going to be more gigafactories soon? Elon said that they're going to be scouting locations in 2022, which is next year, and that they'll announce locations in 2023. And this is interesting because we kind of thought that they would just start turning on gigafactory after gigafactory. But it sounds like, if he's being truthful here, that they're going to wait a couple of years. And the more I thought about this, the smarter I think this idea is. I think it comes down to publicity. Giga Shanghai is obviously a very successful uh, factory, but it is in China. So I don't think most of the Western world really cares that much. When Giga Texas and Giga Berlin go online and people start working there and people start moving there and mayors and governors are going to start seeing, you know, big booms in their economy, I think that that is going to lead to some really great publicity and everyone's going to want to have a Giga factory in their city uh, or in their state. And what that's going to lead to is more incentives mm. for Tesla to make a gigafactory in that place. Right now, I mean, yeah, we did have the Tulsa versus Austin uh, you know, competition, so to speak, for the gigafactory. But I think that uh, Tulsa wasn't Tesla's first choice. I think that right. they want, you know, Chicago or other really big cities where they're going to be able to attract Detroit, good <laughs> maybe. Um, and I think this is really smart because also they can learn some lessons. I think they haven't learned all the lessons that they need to learn yet because the plants aren't up and running. And so before you go copying it to a new plant, maybe good to learn for a couple of years with the new giga presses and the new paint shops. So you can put that newfound information into the new plants. And I just want to throw out that maybe Tesla's waiting for some auto manufacturers to go belly up so that they can buy some cheap facilities. Or at least locate near where those facilities were, build a brand new factory, and hire all of those talented workers mm -hmm. um, who are now looking for a job. Another question from Tesla shareholders was, do you plan to offer dividends? Elon immediately basically shot this down. He said that dividends are for companies that have run out of things to invest in. And he says that Tesla has not run out of things to invest in internally by a long shot. I loved hearing this because it's so true. Um, when you've got a company that's in just kind of regular mode and it's not really innovating anymore, that's the time to offer dividends to shareholders if you want. But if you can invest your money like Tesla can into making more money, then why not do that? Um, some investors wanted to see quarterly updates on energy, just like we get quarterly updates on automotive. What did Elon say to that? He says that they're thinking of starting that next year because up until now, it was not a good indicator. Basically, I think that the data was lumpy. He also said that the Megapack factory was not online yet. So once that's online, I'm expecting that we're not going to see lumpy batteries. Right. We're going to be seeing growth. a lot of growth. Uh, investors wanted a Model 2 update. Elon basically just took this as an opportunity to say that he's, he doesn't like calling it the Model 2. He explained that they called it the Model 3 because they wanted it to be the Model E. Uh, but that Ford did. The, uh, uh. Now we can't call it the Model 2, even though everyone was calling it the Model 2. We know that they're going to call it something else. And I'm going to keep calling it the Model 2 until they come out with it. I mean, what, what, what am I supposed yes, to do? Yes, but I think the answer he gave or the non-answer actually tells us a lot. We've heard that this Model 2 is going to come out in 2023. He would have just repeated that if that was the case. But the fact that he didn't say anything about it and he moved on, maybe that means it's not coming out in 2023. So maybe... 2024. I mean, they're doing a lot of other stuff in 2024. No, sure. Right? But like, I think he would have been a lot more positive about the release date if he was sure of the release date. There was a question from shareholders about Giga Texas. Is this the last U.S. location? He didn't answer that question, really. Also, part of that question was like, are you going to be making just bigger and bigger Giga factories? He says that not all Giga factories will get bigger. He said mostly because of speed efficiencies. I think he wants to go closer to his like alien dreadnought idea. And this is a really important point because, yes, you can build bigger factory, put more machines in it, more people in it to get more output, or you can speed up the lines. And if you speed up the lines, you don't have to get bigger. Right. And you can do that by making everything a little bit denser, a little bit smaller. And he, just faster. Also, I think you don't need bigger factories if you're going to be building on continents that don't have as big an auto market, like maybe Australia or 
Africa. Or if you use Tesla bots instead of humans. Uh, that could be it. Uh, speaking of Tesla bots, uh, Elon pointed out that they've had a lot of applicants for their Tesla AI software and hardware teams. And he tweeted out, uh, sorry if we've been too dumb to respond to you. Please cite evidence of exceptional ability in a few bullet points. Nothing else matters. And I thought this was really interesting because it came about with a question about the limiting factor being engineers. And Elon said, you know, if Nikola Tesla applied to Tesla today, would we even give him an interview? I'm not sure we would. What did he mean by that? That's basically, to me, him saying that there's a problem with like Tesla HR or Tesla hiring mm -hmm. um, that they don't know how to hire. Yeah, that's a good point, because if Nikola Tesla applied today, I mean, he dropped out of college and uh, he's also been dead for quite a while. Well, okay, but, but, <laughs> no, no, but you're right. Like he dropped out of college, so he doesn't have a college degree. You know, if he put some stuff on his resume, would the hiring managers it would it look kooky? I mean, it would right. it look like, you know, I mean, he's a genius. But if you're not also a genius, sometimes it's hard to know if you're talking to a crazy person or a genius. And I think you're right. I think this is the problem Tesla has today, which is. Uh, if I put down some stuff on my resume and it's like, I did this, this and this, and you don't know what it means, you could just chalk it up to uh, this guy really isn't a good fit. He didn't work at Facebook or Google before and he didn't get his master's degree in AI. I, I think that this comes down to hiring managers. They're not equipped for this. They're not equipped for hiring AI people. They're equipped for hiring some office worker who's going to come to work every day from nine to five. Uh, they're not in the business of hiring geniuses. I mean, think of like Toby from The Office, right? He's gonna look at a resume and he's gonna go, oh, college degree, that's good. Oh, he, they came into the interview wearing a suit and tie. That's good, that's what we wanna see. That's very simple. They don't want, you know, a Nikola Tesla who is so many levels above them that they're just gonna feel intimidated. And here's the thing, they don't wanna stick their neck outs for people that they think are geniuses mm -hmm. because they don't know how to identify geniuses. Case in point, most geniuses throughout history, we only realized they were geniuses after they're dead. Right. So, or we killed them. The problem is you have a hiring manager who wants a safe hire. Basically, they don't want the next day after the first day of hiring that some manager busts into their office and goes, why did you hire this guy? This guy's an idiot. I can't believe you hired this person. Well, they graduated um, cum laude from uh, this very respected university and uh, also uh, they uh, had a lot of extracurriculars and th I thought that would be good. Well, okay, he did look good on paper. Oh, just don't, do, don't let it happen again, right? They don't want to stick their neck out for some guy who comes in, you know, dressed in a cape, but that's what you might get with AI genius people. Right. All right, there's a question, will Tesla make a minibus? And it, if you watch this one, and I think you should, Elon really, really wanted to dig into VW and he didn't, um, which is funny because he digs into a lot of car companies. Mm -hmm. I think that this goes back to showing uh, that he has a friendship with with Herbert Deese, who's, yeah. who's in charge of VW, and he didn't want to- uh, Ruffle any feathers. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. He said basically, eventually Tesla will make all models. So that'll be fun. We'll be getting a Tesla minibus someday. But yeah, he could have said anything he wanted about VW and he didn't. <laughs> yeah, there was like 15 seconds there where you could tell that he was just like, oh, resist the urge. <laughs> Uh, one Tesla shareholder thinks the solar roof seems kind of slow with its rollout. And Elon admitted that Tesla energy got shortchanged because of the Model 3. What do you mean? Uh, Elon basically admitted that he stole everyone from Tesla energy. Anyone who is useful at Tesla energy, they pulled them over to work on the Model 3 ramp when oh. that was happening. Um, so he says that they're a couple of years behind on the solar roof. That makes a lot of sense. Now that we think about it, uh, solar roof, you know, was announced years ago and it's been very slow and that makes so much sense. There was a big brain drain from solar roof going into Model 3 and now they can put them back onto solar roof. And I think it's amazing that Elon was able to admit this in a shareholder meeting. Mm. I think that most CEOs would be stricken with guilt about that, that they would just go, well, of course, uh, we're um, working towards our projections. They wouldn't admit that they just stole all the talent away from part of their business. And then Elon talked about how they don't really want to go after the used home market. They want to go after new houses. Yeah, I think that this comes down to uh, a couple points. If you design the house for solar roof, you might be able to make it a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, if you're gonna be doing like a whole neighborhood with those cookie cutter houses, pretty easy for a crew to just be like, all right, you know, get me a left flange, Ricky, you know, throw me that coupler adapter. 
I'm sure that they're, if they're used to doing the same roof over and over again, um, that you're going to have efficiencies there. And I think that that's what Tesla needs to do. It's also good branding. Yeah. I mean, a home builder that can sell a new house with a new solar roof on it, that's going to bring up its value. Exactly. And it just makes it all the more luxurious if only new houses have it. I think that going forward, they are going to do retrofit roofs. But I think to begin with, as Elon pointed out, um, it is most efficient to do new homes. Then a question came up. When will we not need to mine for batteries? Elon said uh, he was like 30 to 40 years ish. I mean, he doesn't know. Nobody knows. So he went into a little mini lecture on, uh, you know, battery chemistries. He said that a lot of batteries are going to be iron based cells. And speaking of 40 years, a shareholder asked, when will there be a Tesla off planet factory? Elon said uh, that he hopes before he's dead. So he's thinking 40 years ish. Someone asked, Elon, what's your safety score? And uh, Elon didn't know. If you think about it, he already has the he already has the software. He doesn't need a Imagine safety if he score. Was booted. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. Right. Like this is it's kind of a silly question. He doesn't have a score. He's the CEO of the company. And he admitted that the safety score beta is new and it's going to get a lot of changes. Um, and so, you know, we, a lot of us don't like it. And hopefully he's getting that message. There's a question about Tesla insurance. And Elon said we'll be offering it in Texas next week. And we'll be upgrading California to allow us to use actual driving history. They just need permission from the regulators. And aspirationally, they will expand to the rest of the country next year. Um, But he reemphasized that it is a regulatory labyrinth. Uh, Elon was asked about the ATV. And he said that they definitely want to make the ATV, which is great because we haven't heard a lot about it. Um, But basically, it sounds like they haven't fully designed it. He said that they wanted to make it a really safe ATV, something that's really hard to roll. So putting the battery pack low. He does not like little motor vehicles, mostly because he got in a car accident when he was on a motorcycle. Right. um, And he almost died. So fair enough. Uh, But yeah, he wants to make the safest ATV, which I think would be a very nice thing to uh, market. And he was asked again about electric planes. And he says that he's been dying to do it for a decade. He said maybe one day uh, battery density is improving every year. And he reemphasized the numbers that they would need, which is like 400 watt hours per kilogram. Um, I think that, yeah, this is something that can happen later. (laughs) Like, it's not like there's too much competition in terms of electric aviation. But I'm excited to see what happens in the future about it. And the best part about this whole shareholder meeting for me was that Elon was in a really good mood. He was cracking jokes. And uh, I really think this move to Austin is going to be good for Elon specifically, because he basically works at SpaceX now in Boca Chica, lives in his little home there. And if he has to just make a short flight to Austin, that's way better for him than flying all the way to California. And I also wonder if this move to Austin might have been brought about by little baby X, the fact that he's a father of a young kid again, and you want to spend more time you know, with your child and not flying around. And so maybe this was predicated by that. All right, so let's talk about FSD beta 10.2 rollout. So Elon tweeted this out last week. FSD beta 10.2 rolls out Friday midnight to about a thousand owners with perfect 100 out of 100 safety scores. Rollouts will hold for several days after that to see how it goes. If that looks good, beta will gradually begin rolling out to 99 scores and below. Then Elon tweeted, a few last minute concerns about this build. Release likely on Sunday or Monday. Sorry for the delay. Ross Gerber said, by the way, L.A. driving is crazy. It's only fair we get some extra points for survival. And Elon said, haha, true. Uh, throw Boston in there, too. Throw most places in there. Jason said, does seniority matter at all for those with 100 out of 100? How will Tesla determine who gets it first with that perfect score? Elon said, everyone with a perfect score will get it. There are roughly 1,000 owners with perfect scores, maybe 1,100 to 1,200 by Friday night. Tesla Club Wisconsin said, will this be a nationwide rollout? Elon said, yes. And oh boy, the excitement started building up. Is it coming? When is it coming? coming? Tesla Silicon Valley said, is 10.2 still coming? Elon said Sunday or Monday. So then Elon tweeted out, team is in fact working hard. They just confirmed 10.2 is good to go tomorrow night. So that was Sunday. So he means Monday. So then Monday in the wee hours of the morning, Holmar's catalog said, Elon, if FSD beta 10.2 isn't coming tonight to everyone who got 100, let us know now so people can go to sleep. If it's not ready, that's all right. But let's let everyone get a good night's rest. Elon said it's coming. So no 
rest for the wicked. And then at 3 a.m. on Monday morning, FSD Beta 10.2 or 2021.32.25 was dropped. Elon said Beta 10.2 now rolling out to cars with a 100 out of 100 safety score over 100 miles. And something else was dropped, too, apparently. The FSD Beta NDA had been dropped, uh, according to Holzmar's catalog. And Elon tweeted out, it'll be available in perforated rolls. So, okay, so they got rid of the NDA. So now I guess everyone can tweet out whatever they want and show whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Jesse. Um, According to that last tweet there, it says you need at least 100 miles of driving to get a valid safety score. So is there like a miles driven component? I wonder if like more miles with 100 is worth more than less miles with 100 score. I mean, according to what Elon has said, and that has continued to change, which is very frustrating for anyone who has. So basically good on them because this means that someone has to have traveled 100 miles without basically having any problems i I think you can maybe have a little you know there's some margin of error but not a lot most people are sitting at around you know somewhere in the 90s if they're if they've been good they've been good little boys and girls this definitely as we talked about before selects certain areas it definitely selects certain drivers who will go to the nth degree to get a good score but as we go down the list i think that we're going to be entering more realistic places and more realistic drivers um so i'm excited to see how that rollout goes i'm gonna temper my expectations i'm gonna think that this is gonna take months instead of weeks that's my Hmm. interpretation hope you're wrong all right so this next story is insane something you need to see to believe So last Friday in the Linkau district near Taipei, Taiwan, a man by the name of Lin, who is an owner of a black Model 3, was involved in a minor accident. When Lin stepped out of the car to talk to the driver of the Toyota Yaris, four other men stepped out of that car and attacked Lin. After assaulting him, they dragged him into their car and began to drive away. Luckily, Lin's friend and fellow Tesla owner Chen sees all of this go down and he's in his white Model 3. And he intervenes like a freaking action hero. He slams his car into the Yaris holding his friend. And I'm just going to play the video here. Uh, But just so everyone knows, no one was severely injured. Yeah, Chen was able to disable the Yaris and save his friend. The men from the Yaris then fled the scene before the police arrived, but the Yaris was rented and all four men were identified by the rental agency and they've all been taken into custody. Now, I just want to take a step back and look how powerfully this Model 3 was able to disable the other car. And I think that police departments should take notice here. It's probably going to be a little while before we see footage of Tesla police cars proving themselves like this. So it's important to use this footage to realize what a Tesla can do when it comes to ending a pursuit quickly, decisively, and most importantly, safely. Yeah, I mean, the Model 3 was able to get up to speed so much faster and cut off the perpetrators before they were able to escape. This means that this never turned into a dangerous high speed chase. And I think that's a really important point here is because if the Yaris had taken off with the Model 3 in pursuit, if that was like a regular police chase scene, then you're getting up to high speeds in a city. Right. And we've all seen that movie take place. Once you get over about 50 miles an hour, really hard to slow the cars down without doing something dangerous. What we saw here is more of a series of fender benders. It kept everyone safer and probably saved lives. I would urge everyone watching this to head over to our Clips channel and send this story to their local police chiefs. Now, from what we've been hearing, some police departments are having a hard time convincing constituents to buy Teslas as police vehicles. So... 
please send this to them. And if you have a Tesla, consider offering to take them for a test drive. And be sure to send them our video where we interview a police chief who has one in his fleet. And if you think that the Model 3 impressively stopped the bad guys, just wait until the Cybertruck comes out. And speaking of Cybertruck, Tesla Time News is sponsored by Cybertruck Owners Club. There you'll find a crowdsource reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in line. You can check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussion, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. So there's nothing like the day when you finally pay off a big loan. We reported on In Depth last week that Tesla has paid off the $1.4 billion loan for Giga Shanghai early. Tesla Roddy tweeted out the story and Elon tweeted back, Tesla always pays its debts. Is this a Game of Thrones reference? <laughs> I think it might be. Anyway, shout out to JPR007 for finding it in Tesla's financial filings. It was a five-year loan and it was repaid in 16 months. From, I might add, internally generated funds even while construction and expansion of the Gigafactory Shanghai continued. That is the beauty of Tesla's high ROIC. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go watch last week's In-Depth. In fact, Elon is right. Tesla has paid back all its loans. So next time someone pulls out the old line, well, Tesla only exists because the government bailed them out. You can correct them that Tesla got a $465 million federal loan and paid it back in 2013, nine years early. Whereas Ford still hasn't paid back their $6 billion loan. Not to mention the $50 billion the Fed spent to bail out GM. And let's go from China to Germany, where on Saturday, October 9th, local residents were invited to Giga Berlin. Yeah, it looked like they had a great party there. Um, there was like a two hour tour of inside the factory. Um, there was Model Y rides. Tesla was showing off their new structural 4680 battery pack. There was the new headlight projector display, the new paint shop with a new color, which no one I don't think has seen yet. Yeah, all the robots were moving around. It was really, I mean, lucky, lucky uh, Grundheim residents because what an amazing event. Elon got on stage and, and tried to speak some German. And we're going to discuss more of this uh, about Giga Berlin Fest on our Patreon bonus stories this week. So be sure to join us on Patreon for that. Uh, but before we go, uh, Elon did mention this. Is that like a spaceship? That is cyber beer. So it's I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to guess is this this a glass bottle or is this a stainless steel bottle? Because I can kind of see through it at the bottom. Yeah, he said, we're going to build a train station that's right on the property, and then we're going to have graffiti murals all throughout the factory on the outside and everything. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. We've got some of them already, and we're even going to have a beer. So, yeah, Cybertruck-inspired bottle. Is this going to be like an order of magnitude better than other beers? Uh, maybe it has an order of magnitude more alcohol <laughs> than, than your average beer. I don't know if that's what you wanted a factory. Well, so could this mean that they want to have a kind of like... Because doesn't like BMW have like a sausage making guy and that's like a, an official part in BMW is like a sausage. So I don't know Would they carry on this kind of tradition of like, um, you know, beer at the factory kind of thing. Like, I don't know. It's cool. I mean, it's kind of like the tequila we have here. You know? Right. I mean, I think you put something in a cool bottle and uh, it gets a lot of attention. But like, do you think it's going to be? Just something you get at the factory or do you think they're going to be selling this all over the world? I, I don't know. I think it's just going to be at the factory, but I'm sure, you know, it's going to be on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So put your comments <laughs> down below. Let, let us know what you think, uh, you know, Giga Beer is going to be. Is it going to be a lager? It's going to be an IPA. Let us know what you think in the comments below. But not to be outdone, uh, Sawyer Merritt said, so I'm feeling Giga Texas deserves a similar opening to Giga Berlin. Cool tour, rave, some great Texas barbecue, Austin food trucks and the biggest Tesla owners meet up in Tesla history. What do you say, Elon? And Elon said, hell yeah. So All that right. sounds like it's going to be a rip roaring fun time. That's awesome. Now, one of the things that we saw at GigaFest Berlin was this. Paul Kelly tweeted out, these lights are an Easter egg, fully adaptive lights on the Berlin Model Y. This is huge. Elon said, yeah, headlights are precision LED so they can be bright without blinding oncoming traffic, pedestrians and cyclists. OK, so those two moving words are the headlights themselves. Yeah, I think that they made special lenses to make it say that. I don't think that you could make it say anything else or look like anything else. I think that those were just lenses. And I, I'm just wondering if there's any difference between these lights 
and the lights that we have in our cars now. Oh, right, because we can you can adjust them up and down uh, using software. Right, and I'm assuming if you had even better software, you could maybe even adjust them left or right. You're not gonna be able to drive down the street though with like the words Tesla on the ground. I mean, maybe an aftermarket kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. know if the DOT would approve. But speaking of accessories, it appears that Korean Tesla owners have been getting an email from Tesla announcing that the CCS to Tesla charging adapter is coming out on October 26th. So to be clear, this is for Teslas to be able to charge on CCS networks. This is a game over for other EV drivers. I'm sorry to say. What? Okay, well, I know that this is only coming to Korea first, so it's, it'll take a while for a lot of these adapters to make it to the U.S. I think, though, that if you live in Korea, you could start a very profitable business by marking up the price of these and selling them in the U.S. Yeah, they're selling for about $250 in Korea, but I don't get why this would be bad for other EV drivers. Well, uh, most EV networks, at least in the United States, which is what we're talking about here, don't have to worry about Teslas coming and parking at their stations oh, if they're right. CCS for the fast chargers. Now they do, which means that uh, the most popular EV in the country that can go long range, which is, the, of course, the Model 3, can now stop at CCS charging stations. Oh, so I see. Now the, all the stations will be full. Or they're all going to be broken. But Tesla owners are going to get out and whack them and break them? No, no, no. It's just that um, from what we've seen with I'm going to just call out like Electrify America and also EVgo, um, their stations aren't that robust. And so the more use they get, the more broken they seem to get. Oh, OK. So if there's going to be a lot more people charging at these at these chargers, they're going to break a lot more frequently, which means that if you drive like an Audi e-tron, a Chevy Bolt, uh, you know, Nissan Leaf, something like that. Nissan Leaf, of course, uses Chidemo, but these chargers break all the same. I think that it could be an issue for. Uh, those drivers, because it won't take too many Tesla drivers to kind of equivalent to like all the Chevy Bolt owners mm -hmm. on the road who use CCS chargers. Um, and if that means that the charger is going to be twice as broken or broken twice as often or full most of the time, that's not good. Yeah. If you're a Korean viewer, please let us know when you, if you get one of these and let us see some footage of how it works. Or send me one. I promise I won't clog up the networks, but I do want to test it out. Hey, if you could just hit the like button real quick, that would make a huge difference to us and it could share this video with someone on the other side of the world. So GM announced that they will be announcing the Chevy Silverado at CES Las Vegas 2022 on January 5th. Are you okay? What are you talking about? You just said announce twice in a sentence. You said, what's Silverado? Uh, that's how they spelled it. Take a look. Isn't that how you normally spell Silverado? Uh, well, but they added that big E there. Okay. So you think it's Silverado? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, okay, wait, wait. So, so, wait, wait, wait. So, GM announced that they're going to be making uh, a Silverado. Yes. Okay. So, what are the stats and the specs? Well, they haven't announced those yet, just that they're going to announce it. So, what did GM announce? Uh, this. So all we know is that this is an electric pickup truck with a glass roof, like the Cybertruck and the Rivian, and and what else? Well, it'll be built on the Ultium platform, and it should also have that four-wheel steer like what we saw on the EV Hummer. Uh, GM President Mark Roos said it will have 24-inch wheels, and that's all we know. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that they announced that they're going to be announcing this. I'm just so – I just – I mean, because, you know, my schedule <laughs> – Gotta have, fit to, it in. have to make sure that I know when things are Pencil in January 5th. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these Silverados. And GM has also announced a new hands-free driver assistance system called Ultra Cruise. So is this an update to Super Cruise? Well, according to GM, Ultra Cruise is an all-new advanced driver assistance technology and significant next step in the company's journey to enable its goal of zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. Designed to ultimately enable hands-free driving in 95% of all driving scenarios, Ultra Cruise eventually can be used on every paved road in the U.S. and Canada. It should work on more than 2 million miles of road at launch in the U.S. and Canada. So what kind of sensors are we talking about here for this uh, thing? Well, they said Ultra Cruise works through a combination of cameras, radars, and LIDAR, developing accurate 360-degree, three-dimensional statistical representations of the environment surrounding vehicles, blah, 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 LIDAR, basically, LIDAR. Okay. And what can it do? 
Basically, it sounds a lot like Tesla's autopilot. Here's all the stuff it can do, which is what autopilot can do. According to GM, drivers will have to pay attention at all times and will be enforced through their driver monitoring system. Ultra Cruise will launch on select models in 2023, with Cadillac being the first to introduce the technology. Okay, so two years from now, GM will have autopilot that Tesla has today. Yes. Okay. Good job. And speaking of copying Tesla, Tesla Roddy tweeted out Rivian's S1 filings hint at a $10,000 autonomous driving suite software based subscriptions for Rivian. Uh, that sounds awfully familiar. Yep. Fred Nella said that's great news. Too bad they have to wait for Tesla to finish so they can copy it. LOL. And Elon, of course, laughed out loud. And that's yes. in reference to the lawsuit where Tesla's suing Rivian for stealing documents through uh, employees that they put. Yeah, now the picture is emerging, right? Rivian hired Tesla employees, had them steal stuff. I guess one of them was also not only the batteries, but now probably the full self-driving. And they're like, hey, let's just do $10,000 full self-driving. Uh, I mean, you know, we've said for years you guys should copy Tesla, but I didn't mean like copy, copy them. <laughs> well, you know, it's the ultimate form of flattery. Our buddy Jeff Roberts in Texas has an update on the boring company in Texas. Hey Zach and Jesse, Jeff Roberts here and it's time for the Boring Company Update. This is the Boring Company headquarters in Pflugerville, Texas, which is about 20 minutes north of Giga, Texas, right off of SH-130. This location serves as a machine shop and support facility for local Boring Company projects and for the R&D facility in Bastrop. This facility is where the Boring Company will learn the most effective ways of penetrating Texan ground and improve their basketball skills. The main attraction at this site is Proof Rock 2, the latest iteration tunnel boring machine that we hope will beat Gary so that Soul crushing traffic can finally be defeated. I hope you enjoyed this Boring Company update. Thanks for watching, and now you know. Whoa, thank you, Jeff. I didn't know the Boring Company was in Texas. Did they dig themselves there? They just popped up one day. <laughs> um, but and, and, and they're working on their awesome basketball skills. That's good to know. I mean, important stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, it's good. I want them to take a break now and then. Um, thank you so much, Jeff Roberts. Uh, he also has great drone footage of Gigafactory Texas. Uh, so be sure to check out his uh, coverage of that. Also, if you're working on building Gigafactory Texas, he basically has like a compendium of all the days that you were doing anything <laughs> at the factory. So cool to check that out. Also, I think someday, um, you know, it'd be great if uh, if Jeff would put together, you know, a, a documentary of the building of it. Like he hasn't done enough for you, huh? I, no, I'm just saying he's got so much great footage and I would love for people who are working on it now um, to maybe think about doing an interview with him for that future documentary. Nice. Book. Yeah. Netflix series. You know, whatever. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, I know, because the Quad Squad are basically, you know, experts in this now. Absolutely. This has never happened before. No. We've had just drones flying around constantly capturing uh, such an amazing building. So cool that Elon allows it. Yeah. Tesla has been forced to raise prices on its cars because of increased costs in the supply chain. Now the cheapest Tesla you can get yourself into costs $42,000. Yeah, the Model 3 Standard Range Plus went up another $2,000 from $39,990 to $41,990. The Long Range stayed the same at $49,990. And the Performance Model 3 went up $1,000 from $56,990 to $57,990. The Model Y Long Range Dual Motor went up $2,000 from $52,990 to $54,990. And the Model Y Performance went up $1,000 from $69,990 to $61,990. So that's four thousand dollars of price increases on the model y long range since april so there's a huge backlog of deliveries for teslas if you ordered a standard range plus today you'll be waiting till april the same as the long range model y this either points to a decrease in u.s deliveries and or an increase in demand now looking at a graph of u.s sales you'll see that deliveries are down compared to that crazy q3 push from last year but fairly steady compared to uh you know q4 of last year so i think that this is kind of both um, a little bit less in terms of production, but also strong demand, at least in terms of orders. Now, this could all be an anticipation of the tax incentives that will hopefully, uh, you know, be coming. But I think that this could certainly dry up a bit if the tax credit doesn't happen. Um, 
but it's still great demand. And I think that some of these people would still consider buying the car even without that incentive. But I mean, it's going to be a big incentive if it comes through. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people I know are like worried. But do I put my order in now? So I'm kind of at the head of the line. But what if the tax credit doesn't come through? So I know a lot of people are kind of skittish right now. And I mean, this could lead to a bunch of people deferring orders in, you know, uh, November, December, just so that way they can get the tax credit in January, which would like, oh, no, wreak havoc on Tesla, you know, sales for Q4. But it would just mean that Q1 would have, you know, a doubling of sales or something like that. So, yeah, I'm really I don't know. I think we should get off the the whole quarter quarter push. It's just like getting so old and it's so much work for the employees. I mean, all hands on deck. Drop what you're doing for 80 hours a week. It's just four times a year. It's not very sustainable yeah. for a sustainable company. All right, it's time for the Starman Report. Starman is back with a SpaceX and Starlink update. Welcome back to the Starman Report. I'm Eli Burton, your host, and it's good to be back with you after my recent travels to bring you the most exciting news in space. This week, Elon Musk's SpaceX hit the $100 billion valuation after a secondary share sale. Considering the massive technology lead that SpaceX has with their rockets and cost per pound to orbit, the $100 billion valuation is quite small compared to what it would be worth if SpaceX was a publicly traded company. Unfortunately, for those of us who are dying to invest, of which I am one, the opportunity to be a public investor will not be coming soon because as Elon has stated numerous times, he will not take SpaceX public until our future on Mars is secure. Although SpaceX is many years away from going public, Elon has promised an earlier IPO for Starlink. And currently, SpaceX plans to roll out Starlink internet nationwide later this month. The Starlink internet service is designed for low to medium density areas, and they're accepting signups at Starlink.com. Even though I'm in a place that I have acceptable internet at a little bit too high of a price, I am on the wait list for Starlink because I would much rather my internet bill help fund the Mars mission rather than be handed to Comcast shareholders. In other news, SpaceX is preparing to send its fifth crewed flight to orbit as part of the NASA Crew-3 mission. This NASA mission will once again be carrying a team of four astronauts that it will deliver to the ISS. They're the next team of SpaceX astronauts rocketing to the International Space Station under NASA's commercial crew program. Raja Chari, Tom Marshburn, Kayla Barron, and Matthias Maurer make up Crew-3. They follow the Crew-2 astronauts, who launched in April at Kennedy Space Center. Welcome on board the International Space Station. And remain on the station right now. Crew 3 will also be six or seven months of working in space. The crew will travel from Houston to KSC for final preparations. In Florida, their new spacecraft will fly with a new name, Crew Dragon Endurance. It's such an exciting time. There's so much going on week to week in the world of SpaceX, Starship, and Starlink. And I want to thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to having you back for more of the most exciting news in space. Thanks, Eli. And if you want to head over to StarmanGifts.com, you can find all of Starman's cool graphic novels and uh, head on over to My Tesla Adventure for Eli's cool YouTube adventures. Speaking of satellites, I want to thank Henson Shaving for sponsoring our channel. Now, you might be asking, what does this razor from Henson Shaving have to do with space satellites? For the whole fascinating story, I urge you to watch our interview with Daniel, the founder and CEO of Henson Shaving, on our Disruptive Investing channel. We'll post a link down below. But basically, Daniel and his family machine these incredibly precise and hard-to-make parts for satellite companies, like they've made parts on the Mars rover, and they wanted to solve a problem, how to make a better shaver. So like Elon, they went back to first principles, and they realized that most of the industry had gone off in the wrong direction. Yeah, Daniel reached out to us because he's a really big fan of our channel. And at first we were like, that's great, but how does your shaver fit our channel? I'll tell you how it fits. A first principle solutions company that makes a super sustainable product. If you shave any part of your body on a regular basis, then you're probably buying a lot of these disposable cartridges. Yeah, expensive plastic that you throw away over and over again. And you have to buy over and over again. Not only is that super wasteful, but it's super expensive because let's face it, those cartridges aren't cheap, right? With Henson, you only change out a single steel blade. Which means you're going to save a lot of money by switching to Henson. I use Henson and I no longer have to worry about my face breaking out after shaving. I absolutely love them and I know you will too. You can help support the show and get yourself a razor to be proud of by going to HensonShaving.com. And I guess because he likes us so much, Daniel has offered our viewers something special. When you order a Henson shaver today, 
you will get a free box of 100 safety blades. That's easily three years of blades for free. You'll be helping to support this channel, this planet, your wallet, and your skin. All right, it's time for Into the Future. Escape into the future. So you've driven a Renault Zoe before, right? Right, when we were in Sweden. Uh, the Zoe is a fun EV, uh, but it does have a limited range. Well, Chargy, a UK EV charging company, has developed a wireless charging pad, and they've announced a pilot program in the UK to test it. This new charging solution will mean that in the near future, those without access to private charging via garages, driveways, or other off-street parking options will be able to charge their vehicles efficiently and cable-free. This infrastructure means no charging cable, potentially hazardous for other road or pavement users, and no lamppost charging and is only activated when an EV parks over it. Ten Zoes with wireless induction charging capabilities will be supplied by Hayakar, and the general public can rent one for about one pound an hour or five pounds per day, plus insurance. So the first trial is taking place in Marlow in Buckinghamshire, where a pad has been placed in the Liston Road car park. Nine more trials are planned around Buckinghamshire, so go check it out and report back to us, please. Now, it's funny because we've heard a lot about induction charging things, and I've seen them, I think, at trade shows and stuff like that, but I haven't seen anyone who has one. Right. So I I thought that it was like a common thing, and oh, yeah, of course, you can get one if you want one, but I don't think I know anyone who has one. This story really brought that to the front of my mind. Um, if anyone out there nose of an induction charging uh, pad for an EV that is in use and like maybe you own an EV that can charge on it, please let us know because I I know that it's a thing, but I haven't seen one in action. Yeah, I mean, they're more expensive, I think, than we want to pay for charging because it's so easy the way it is. But yeah, in some cases, maybe it'll work out. And that's why I think it's smart they're doing a pilot program to test it. All right, it's time for Going Green and we're brought to you by EcoWare. Remember that we carbon offset the manufacturing, the shipping and the life cycle of your purchase. We plant 10 trees for every purchase and we help cap a well with the Well Done Foundation. So go check out some of the cool designs we have there. We have all sorts of products from t-shirts and towels and hats and mugs. And we've even got honey now. So if you're looking for a Christmas present for that person who's watching this show, uh, maybe head over to EcoWare and find them something that they're going to want to wear every day. So speaking of Austin, Texas this week, the board of Capital Metro, which is Austin's transport provider, approved the purchase of 197 new electric buses from Proterra and New Flyer. According to Capital Metro, this is the largest EV procurement in the U.S. to date. Capital Metro's goal is to transition their entire fleet of 400 buses to electric. 26 Proterra ZX-5 Max electric buses will be delivered by the end of next year. These 40-foot buses carry about 40 passengers and have 675 kilowatt-hour batteries. They can drive a whopping 329 miles of range on a single charge. I kind of feel like that's too much range. <laughs> but, you know, Texas is a big place. It is. All right, it's time for Sunspots. So London-based Solar Water PLC signed an agreement last year with the Saudi Arabian government to build this, a solar dome. What does a solar dome do? Well, the CEO of Solar Water, David Reevely, says it's essentially a steel pot buried underground covered with a dome. This is then surrounded by reflectors that focus solar radiation toward the dome. This heats up seawater, which is pumped into the dome, and it evaporates, which gives you... Uh, hot water? It's... Yeah. Fresh, oh, well, fresh water. Okay, yeah, okay. Fresh water. <laughs> fresh water. Wait, so it's a desalination plant? Yeah, no filters needed. It's carbon neutral. It's fast and cheap to build. The solar dome should be completed in the northwest of Saudi Arabia this year. So this is supposedly the first desalination plant to use the solar dome technology, but solar water is not alone. Many companies are using this tech now because it's so cheap and simple and because so many places around the world are running out of fresh water. And if you'd like to get solar on your house, but you don't know much about it and you don't know if you need a solar dome, Dome or something, uh, contact our friends at Energy Pal. They are the solar energy geeks that know everything about batteries and solar, and they'll help you go through all the tax incentives and all that stuff. Contact them below. Tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. What do we got this week? Uh, we've got our buddy Tim, who's going to build an electric airplane. Hey, Zach and Jesse, Tim here with Going Green. So it started in 2019 with this Tesla Model 3, and of course, solar power to charge it. And now, 2022 Zero FX motorcycle gets 486 miles per gallon. That's oh, wait, there's more. By 2023, for the cost of a Tesla, I will build this electric airplane. And 
I've been wanting to get rid of the last really gas guzzling thing in my life, and this is it. It's a motor glider from a company called Sonics. So the question is, why am I spending all this money on this conversion from gas to electric airplane uh, for my granddaughter? Uh, this plane gets about 16 miles per gallon. That's one six. It's just terrible for the environment. So now the question is, how am I going to do this and enter the Sonics company? I had visited this back a couple years ago and never thought I would build one of these, but they have a motor glider, which is the most efficient airframe that you can buy, at least as a kit builder that anybody could buy. Then enter Kit Planes Magazine, who did an article on Gabriel DeVault, who made this electric airplane prototype. What Gabriel did was take a motor, controller, and 14.4 kilowatt hour battery out of this motorcycle and put it in an airplane. Gabriel made a kit that could adapt this motorcycle motor to the aircraft and it looks something like this when it's all done. The battery's up front uh, forward the firewall and you just put a propeller on it and uh, you put the display in the aircraft. You just basically lift everything out. He also did thermal testing of it which is very important because if it gets too hot while in flight uh, you have to throttle back the prototype airplane has been tested through many flight regimes and I deemed it pretty darn safe. So I thank you for listening and please subscribe. Wow, so visit Tim's Tips YouTube channel for more information on all the cool electric stuff that he works on. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. And uh, this week we've got a Investor Club bonus story that you're gonna wanna see. Uh, we've also got stories on Giga Berlin Fest, GM's planned obsolescence, and EIA's outlook. So you can see all of that and more by signing up over on patreon.com slash now you know. Uh, we have lots of other perks, but the Patreon bonus stories is the base perk. For just a buck a month, you can help support the show, but also get weekly bonus stories. It's like, uh, you know, it's like the expansion pack to Tesla Time News. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the shout outs. Who do we got this week, Jess? We got John T. UK, number 9948. We got Jason Huber, Dirk Bester, Zeke, Jane Coombs, Jonathan Gospeak, Richard Boyan Jr., Big Scrimp, Benson Yee, Tom Siego, James, Kyle Irish, Ingramar Moen, Wonderlick 111, Chuck Hofeller, Corkin, Cody Hunt, Monica Matson, Christian K., Sarah Kwasak, Paul Murphy, Ross Coombs, Evelyn Acosta, Harris Mohammedy, and Holmes Holstrom. Thank you so much for being our patrons. We can't do the show without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. Pranay said, out of curiosity, which is your favorite Mel Brooks movie? Spaceballs, Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, The Producers, The Twelve Chairs. Elon said, tough choice. So many great movies, but Spaceballs for me. VM100 said, how is 10.2 looking? The new beta testers can't wait to get on board. So excited. Elon said, looking good. Houston said, Elon, could you have your team make it a little harder to order a car, please? I was driving the family to a pumpkin patch yesterday in our 2017 Explorer. The wife asked, how do you buy a Tesla? I said, takes about a minute on your phone. A few minutes later, I get this. <laughs> Elon said, awesome, effortless ordering is our goal. So that's kind of what he's not going to make it harder. <laughs> While well, Germo said, electricity costs in Norway yesterday and today is 0.0012 cents per kilowatt. I can charge my Model 3 from 0 to 100% for only 9 cents. Massive winds and high level of water in magazines are some of the reasons why. Elon said, wow. Elon tweeted out, Floki Frunk Puppy. So we finally get a picture of Floki in the frunk. He's getting bigger. Tesla Roddy tweeted out, how did Tesla find chips? Morgan Stanley breaks down impressive Q3 delivery performance. And Elon said, this was extremely difficult. Huge props to Tesla engineering, supply chain, production, and key suppliers. Tesla tweeted out, NYC is seen through the Model Y glass roof. Lex Friedman said, I sure would love to hear you talk about autopilot and FSD on a podcast. Elon said, sure. John Krause said, is this the same safety score system that will be used for Tesla insurance? If so, will there be further refinements before then? Elon said, definitely further refinements coming to early beta safety test score. It will be refined continuously until an extremely good predictor of crash probability, exciting actuarial problem, which is an oxymoron. JC Comrade said, Starlink beta is ending this month as stated. Will we see more of the southern states like Louisiana and Texas rollouts? Elon said, should be nationwide rollout by end of month. Note, still limited by peak number of users in same area. This will improve as more satellites are launched. 
Peter Diamante said, Elon Musk has played a massive role in transforming payments, space exploration, cars, and green energy adoption. What industry do you want him to tackle next? My choice is aviation. What's yours? Elon said, I'm so dying to do a supersonic electric VTOL jet, but adding more work will make my brain explode. Tesla Fax said, Tesla says their Giga Berlin body line makes one new Model Y body every 45 seconds. That's up to 7,000 cars a year at peak capacity in phase one of Giga Berlin already. Above 600,000 a year, even with 10% maintenance downtime. It will hopefully achieve sustained cycle time of 45 seconds at 75% uptime over an average week. That's roughly 10,000 cars a week if we run 24-7. Holmar's catalog said this 4680 shit is f***ing huge, just as big as full self-driving. It will let Tesla make an EV for less than what it costs to make a gas car. What happens when EV is the cheapest option off the lot before you even factor in fuel and maintenance savings? Who would buy a polluting car? Elon said cells and full self-driving are massive. The rest is just beauty and romance. But life is empty without the last two. Then someone tweeted out this graph of the lowest probability of injured tested by NHTSA, showing the Model 3, the Model S, and the Model X are the safest cars. And Elon said, it's true. Jeff Bezos said, listen and be open, but don't let anyone tell you who you are. This was just one of the many stories telling us all the ways we were going to fail. Today, Amazon is one of the world's most successful companies and has revolutionized two entirely different industries. <laughs> and Elon responded with a silver medal. <laughs> all right. So we did a poll. Should Tesla have moved their headquarters to Texas? And what did the people say? Yeah, most people said, yeah, it was uh, the right move. All right. It's time for community mail time. Community mail. Time. Remember, if you have pictures or stories, please send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. So our buddy Reg in the UK wrote to tell us about this little known tax incentive for EVs in the UK. Your employer has to set it up, but it can save both the employees and the employer money. It's a little too complicated to get into here. But for example, it can lower a Tesla Model 3 monthly lease payment from £524 to £267. That's quite a saving. So if you live in the UK, reach out to your employer and ask about the EV salary sacrifice scheme or basically an EV bike to work scheme. Bartso sent us these photos of the Model Ys being delivered in Warsaw, Poland. Awesome. Archie sent us this Model X with a cool orange wrap he spotted in Solana Beach, California. Nice. It looks like it has a front body kit too. Frank in the Netherlands spotted these Kia EV6s on his drive the other day. I wonder where they're going. Jonathan went to the Barcelona Auto Show and has pictures of the Cupra Tavascan Extreme E, the Ballastar Revolt, the BMW CEO 4, the Harley Davidson e-bike, the Miku electric motorcycle, and the Mini e-Pace. Thank you, Jonathan. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. That was so nice. Larry's mom took delivery of her new Model Y in Carlsbad, California for her 88th birthday. Happy birthday, Dorothy. And you wanted different color Teslas, Jesse. So how about this tannish Model Y that Francis spotted in Los Angeles? Nice. Does that fit the bill? I like it. Tannish. Cool. I don't know if that's the color. And remember, we shared a story from our buddy Joe in Indiana a couple weeks ago that he was going to show his Model 3 to the police in a local town. Well, he sent us this update. I just wanted to quickly touch base and follow up after meeting with the North Judson, Indiana town police over the weekend. I drove the town marshal and another officer around and answered questions for an hour or two. We also dropped by the house of another local official. I believe he was a member of the town council and drove him around, too. I answered all their questions and provided other info that they may not have thought to ask. They were exploring the idea of adding a Model 3 to the fleet to get out ahead of the curve. They were interested in both saving money and adopting an EV. They said they were very intrigued with the idea of doing this before meeting with me. And after our test drive and Q&A, all three said they were convinced that they should move ahead and order a Model 3. I think they need to talk to others and get it fully approved, but I was left with the feeling that this is now almost guaranteed that they'll be placing an order. Wow. A uh, round of applause for Joe in the comments below. You know, it takes time to do that stuff. It might sound very easy when he writes, you know, something like that, but he had to set that up, you know, put time in his schedule, answer all those questions, and it's going to have a big impact because, yeah, maybe it's just one Tesla in one town in Indiana, but that news will spread and that's going to lead to more Teslas everywhere. So awesome work, Joe. Thank you so much for doing that. All right, it's time for Supercharged Reviews. Let's see what we got. Hi, this is Bob. To get the full self-driving test rolling, I decided to take a nice long road trip from my home near Detroit, Michigan. My first stop was at the Marshall Supercharger, then on to Big Rapids. Serenity, my Model Y, and I are at the Supercharger in the parking lot of Meyer, which hosts charging stations in many states. The city, home of Ferris State University, is situated near the geographic center of the Lower Peninsula. 
Great place to shop, rest, relax, and have a picnic in the back of my Model Y while charging for the next leg of the journey. Now you know. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is uh, Travis. Brittany. And we are at the Lima Supercharger in Lima, Montana. It's a tiny little town right off the road. And we have an eight stall, 150 kilowatt Gen 2 supercharger. It uh, is pretty much located near nothing besides a rest area and one little cafe. And that's pretty much all that's in this town besides a gas station. Uh, I'd give this one, what, seven out of 10? Eight. Maybe an eight? Okay, now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Welcome to the Supercharger in Big Sky, Montana. This is truly Big Sky country. And uh, this looks like this area caters to visitors. There's a lot of very new construction. The superchargers are in the parking lot, uh, which is surrounded by businesses, including just to the next to the chargers, we have the what looks like the brand spanking new Wilson Hotel. That looks beautiful. It has a pool and everything. You can't really see it very well through the fence there, but there's a pool. Uh, then there's a, an assortment of restaurants, pubs, cute little shopping. It's a, got a cute little shopping district with shops, gift shops, and you know, any sort of knickknacks that you're looking for as a souvenir of your vacation, you could probably find it here. This also happens to be an extremely scenic, beautiful mountain vistas in the distance. I would imagine this would be a great place to visit, summer or winter, uh, assuming you can get up here in the winter anyway. Uh, it is kind of in the mountains, but it's also in a valley, so I would imagine you could get here. But as you can see, we are surrounded by beautiful mountain scenery. Given the beautiful views and the large array of amenities for visitors, I'm going to give this supercharger location a 10 out of 10. Now you know. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Kevin coming to you from Davenport, Florida. Checking out the new 12 stall supercharger installation. It is very centrally located near Champions Gate off of I-4. Nearby, as you can see me, there is an Aldi's, Taco Bell, a Wawa gas station. And we also have across the street, a Publix, uh, along with McDonald's, uh, a number of other restaurants. Um, great location, and I would rate this an eight out of 10. Now you know. Awesome, thank you so much for doing Supercharger Reviews. If you wanna see all the Supercharger Reviews that we have gathered in the entire world, well, we have a map for you to do that. You can head over to nowyouknowchannel.com and you can actually see the map of all the Superchargers in the world. You can plan out trips that way. All right, what do we got for new Superchargers? We got number eight in Alabama, the 12 stall version three in Montgomery, Alabama. Number 15 in Tennessee, the 12 stall version three in Kimball, Tennessee. Number 37 in Hong Kong, the three stall version three in Hin Kang in Hong Kong. Number 244 in California, the 16 stall version three in Santa Barbara, California. Number 10 in Poland is the six stall version three at Bialystok, Poland. Number 53 in South Korea is the eight stall version three in Jeju, South Korea. Number 28 in Colorado is the 12 stall version three in Denver at First Avenue and Monaco Parkway in Colorado. Number 17 in Minnesota is the two stall version three in Rogers, Minnesota. Number 87 in the UK and 703 in Europe is the 6-stall version 3 in Derby, UK. The 8-stall version 3 in Wildwood, Florida. The 6-stall version 3 in Taiwan in Gishan, Taiwan. 6-stall version 3 in Taiwan at the Gingpu Global Shopping Center in Taiwan. The 4-stall version 3 at Keelung at Zaidong Road, Taiwan. And number 34 in Taiwan is the five stall version 3 in Taichung in Fuxing, Taiwan. Wow, there's a lot of new ones in Taiwan. Yeah. And finally, number 72 in Florida, number 1,158 in the USA, 
3,054 in the world is the eight stall version three at Pompano Beach, Florida. Nice. I love it when there's a big number, you know? All right, Sam, for a Patreon giveaway, you can get to this big barrel of fun by joining us on Patreon. The more you support us, the more chances you have to win. We're giving away a $30 gift card to EcoWare where you can get yourself anything you want from t-shirts to hats. Who is our winner this week? The winner is Joe Ratter. Congratulations, Joe. You uh, have won yourself a $30 gift card. Head on over to EcoWare, pick out maybe an oldie but goodie like this one. Uh, Which one are you wearing this week? Wearing Techno King. Yeah. Because obviously we got to see techno king himself at giga texas that's right now when we were doing the um the superchargers there mm-hmm. um there was that one in um jeju south korea mm-hmm. i've been watching the squid game you know it's a korean show okay and uh I, jeju came up it's a it's a, like a island oh so now i have to go online and check this out and see if like if it's really an island or not I would love it if you guys in South Korea could send us some more uh, supercharged reviews and yep. stuff. I don't know if we have enough fans in South Korea, but like, if if we have any, like, please let's. I need to see more South Korean superchargers because I don't have a real sense of what they're like and what you know how they work. And, yeah, and I mean, for, I mean, I know how they work, but <laughs> for our fans in Taiwan, I mean, you have your work cut out for you. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, what is it? Thirty four in Taiwan. It's a lot. Yeah, for a tiny island. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, you've made it to the end of Tesla Time News, and I just want to uh, give my appreciation for everyone who helps support us on Patreon. Um, Can't do the show without them, and it's just so nice to have a community of such wonderful people. Um, You know, I I guess I could be a YouTuber talking about something else, not that I really want to. Yeah, we get so many cool stories every week from our patrons generally who are telling us about, you know, that they're going solar or they're going electric or, you know, and it's like we can either help solve problems or you help solve our problems. It's like we're a real community. We can put people together. I mean, it's I don't know. It just feels awesome to be part of this because I didn't predict this years ago when we started. I thought we were just going to chat about some stuff and move on. But now it's become like bigger. And I've really started to realize what an impact Tesla has. I mean, uh, some people will contact us. They're like, I just got my car um, and now I want to change my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a catalyst for people because it gives so much power to them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if you buy a gas car, you can't make the gasoline at your house. Nope. Like, what do you get? You're going to make a refinery out of like pipes you buy from Home Depot? No way. Right. So the ability for people to actually, you know, put solar on their roof and, uh, you know, again, thanks to our, our friends at uh, Energy Pal, you can be your you can generate your own power yeah. from your own backyard, from the from the sun that's sitting there just degrading your roof as we speak. If it's sunny out, it, it it's amazing. And, and I think that a lot of people didn't think that it was possible to drive an EV and now they're changing everything else in their lives from their lawnmowers um, to their lawn tools. It's it's amazing. And I'm just so glad that we get to hear about it because if it was just me, if if we were just sitting here and we didn't have a big community of amazing people, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't right. know what an impact it was having. So I really appreciate uh, everyone who reaches out uh, for our community mail times. If you want to reach out to us, that's hello at now you know channel dot com. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week. Now you know. know.